I, j- I just said that, you know, you have, you know, power and strength and courage and audacity and boldness. And, and like, were you that same person prior to or or has this forged you into that person that you just have this just burning desire to to help? free other people because you know other people are going through a mess too and i will tell you i think i've always been i'm i always say i'm an aries i'm a firstborn i've always been kind of a fiery red um but i will tell you i think this exacerbated it talking about the light you know i think my light was on you know from a scale from one to ten i was always around a seven or eight and this to me put me at an 11 and i was like no i no longer can just be just bright enough to kind of be seen. I now need to be bright enough that I can actually now go and serve. Oh, and it takes an extra level to go do that, right? To go out into the world, absolutely, to to make the impact that you're having, to go onto these stages and do all these things. And I'm sure also like through that moment of going through that, I mean, that's like got to be one of the worst fears, especially for for a woman is to go through something like that. Like one of the one of the worst fears, and you came through it. You survived. I know for me personally, one of my biggest fears uh, was actually, and it's a lot of people's was was public speaking. Right, not even on the same level of what you went through, but it was one of my deepest fears. Like literally, it would have me terrified. And um, but I remember putting myself in positions to overcome that. And I remember once I started to just do that, it literally um, made me feel like I could do anything. Like I felt like Superman afterwards, even if I sucked on stage, even if I like literally bombed, because, you know, when you're new at something, you're going to probably suck at it. (laughs) So, uh, but even though I sucked at it in the beginning, I... I persevered and I and I I overcame the greatest fear that I had. And so I felt like strength, you know what I mean? Like I could do anything. And it's a reminder that we're all disasters before we're masters. And I truly don't believe any of us ever become a master because I think you have to constantly be working on yourself. You have to constantly be willing to, again, going back with what's that lesson is lean into that pain. If the pain is public speaking, go and do the public speaking. Is If the pain is... You know what I mean? That you can't, you know, um, run, go start walking, right? Like just lean into whatever that pain is causing you. If it's, if it's talking to you loud enough, lean into it. It doesn't mean you have to lean into everything, right? My other keynote of the audacity to have it all talks exactly to that. Your all is not what the person to the right or the left of you is doing. Your all is what you want, who you want to be. And are you leaning into the right things? Because so many of us decide to lean in and we're like, well, you're going to lean in here and lean in here because this is what society is telling me to do. But ask yourself, like, am I leaning into what really gives me purpose and passion? And if the answer is like, I don't know, you have to do some evaluation. So that's a good point because you could lean into the wrong things, right? You could you could go through a you know, a trauma or something in your life. And a lot of people do that. They, they cope with, you know, drugs and alcohol or what have you. Right. Um, and was there any of that for you? Did you go through a period of that? Was there any, like, um, I mean, I, I, I personally, I know I did that when I was a teenager and, you know, went through some drama and some trauma and, you know, and, uh, yeah, I coped. Yeah. And I think we all have coping mechanisms, right? And I think we all have ways that we like to control. And I think about just so many things in my own life. Um, You know, fortunately, it's never been, you know, um, drugs and alcohol to not that, you know, I, you know, and that I never have drank or, you know, but at the same time, to me, um, it, it really was about control, And what I recognized as someone who went through trauma, I was trying to control everything in my life. Like, and it actually was such a disservice. And some people may be like, that's so phenomenal. You're controlling everything. And it was actually, um, you know, and I'll I'll rewind, you know, in my 20s, I suffered with a really, really bad eating disorder, right? And what I recognized is the eating disorder was not about 
being thin or fitting into a certain size pair of pants anymore. At first, it probably started out that way. And what I recognized is everything else around me felt not, you know, you know, in in control, right? My parents were going through a bitter divorce. I was in college. There was just a lot of like things that were just like, you know, circling the wrong way. And what I recognized is I was using that eating disorder to try to, if I could control myself, right, then everything else I wouldn't worry about. But like, it was not a good place to spend all of my energy and effort. And I'm not proud of it. I'm not ashamed of it. It just was part of my story. Well, and on that note, I want to kind of uh, maybe dive into that a little bit because, um, you know, you're big into fitness and physical health. And how did that play into, you know, you overcoming this in this journey and, and getting through what you got through? How, how did physic, um, you know, being physical and 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 um, health and fitness, how did that play into it? Yeah, and you know, you ask the question. You know, sometimes when we push ourselves into something that we shouldn't control, right, or something that we shouldn't lean into, like a pain, like maybe you know, alcohol or an eating disorder or something, right, a coping mechanism. But I always say, what can you use from this to then bring light to someone else? Like, what is the pause? There's always a positive vibe to it. So if you were a bad drug addict, how can you go into schools and talk to kids to prevent them from from going down the same path that you did? If you had a bad you know, eating disorder, how can you go and show people how they can have a fulfilled life through the right wellness and through the right balance? And that's what I chose to do. I just decided I was going to go be a fitness instructor and help other people feel just so good about fitness and health and wellness. I opened up my own gym. I started an international wellness business that I help people with you know, supplementation and mindset and all of this work because it was like, I learned the hard way and I'm willing to share it saying, I don't want anyone to go down a resort to a path that's destructive. So how can you take anything bad that's happened to you and twist it and turn it into something that's so positive, just like the assault? 